Eddie's back in studio again. Good morning, sir. Good morning, Rob. And you brought with you Larry Hess, too, the county assessor. I did. Uh, I asked, uh, after you texted me yesterday, you asked if I could come on. I'm like, you know, I don't know that I can explain uh, what what your folks want to hear uh, to that degree. So I'm like, you know what, let me go get the guy that, that knows uh, everything about the tax assessments. So Larry, in our Facebook commenting community yesterday, folks were noting that their uh, assessments had arrived. And uh, one of the people who saw theirs first said, uh, be prepared when you get it, because uh, there's going to be a difference this year. Property values have gone up. And along with that, uh, sometimes those, uh, those taxes on that property go too, Larry. Yes, they have. Uh, good morning, you guys. Good, morning. good to be here. Morning, uh, Thanks for coming. Long time listener. Been listening to WRNR <laughs> since uh, when, back when Walked was here. Yeah. So, I mean, when it started, I think. Right. God so, rest his soul, man. So good morning, you guys. Thanks for coming in. We appreciate you. Great to be you. here. Yeah. Great to be here. Let's talk about the assessments. Uh, by, by now, should everybody have gotten theirs, or are they rolling out in waves? They went out. They should have gotten them yesterday, the day before yesterday. Uh, some of them may be a little bit late, but um, they, they're in the mail. And uh, and the you are going to see a little bit of an increase this year. Um, the uh, the majority, let's say, let's say fifty percent of the increase is probably going to be due to that school bond. And you know, the school bond last year that was approved by the voters, one hundred fifty million dollars school bond, had to be paid back over a ten year period. Well, that uh, if you looked at all the tax rates and. Uh, I checked them yesterday, and nobody raised their tax rates except for, like, let's say the county. County actually lowered their tax rates a little bit. Uh, city of Martinsburg lowered their tax rates a little bit, um, but that school bond went up tremendously. And just alone, that school bond is going to increase the tax bill about eight percent, I'm figuring. So, uh, but you're going to see a total increase of approximately 16 17 percent increase on your bill this year ouch now that's not all due to that tax rate the assessments have gone up a little bit we we actually raised the assessments um this year a little bit and um and so along with that that was about 50 percent of it so but um so a lot of stuff happened this year but um you're gonna see an increase and but a lot of that is due to that tax rate so so you say the assessments have gone up countywide yeah. uh that's because of all the new growth that we have coming in the county yes. okay yeah we've had you know we've had growth for the last several years yeah. it's fastest growing county in the state uh, we here i think last year we picked up about 183 million dollars worth of new construction that's just new houses yeah and uh it's a it's a lot of a lot of property to be picked up every year, and we're doing the same thing this year. Yeah. Let me, before you go, Bill, let me just say to our Facebook commenting community: if you do have a question for the county assessor and Larry Hess, just write it into the Facebook uh, comment section, and we'll read them as we get them. Go ahead, Bill. I was going to say a uh, point you mentioned, but I think it needs to be emphasized that the county government, the county commissioners, actually lowered the levy. They this did, year. yeah, a little so, over one percent. Yeah, think. which yeah. is to their credit, they were. Hey, Mr. Stouffer, yep. that's that's happened the last two. Years years in yeah. a row mm -hmm. the two previous years it remained the same so there's been no increase in the levy rate uh, exactly. but there, there was something that larry explained to me yesterday that i don't think most people understand it. uh and larry if you could uh explain to them about the multiplier well um that's it's basically a percentage it's a multiplier on the base price of or the values we have in our computer system and every year we do a study and we go through all the valid sales we do a study and if the market seems to be going up or if it's going down or whatever we can change those values by raising that modifier it's just the percentage we put in there and it went up this year a little bit it went it's up been, why because, because of the values because of valuation uh, yes. uh, yeah. value throughout the yeah. county yeah okay we have to think about this we have to be within 90 to 110 percent of fair market value properties in this county and if we're low we don't pass our monitoring so we have to have those values up there so we study all the sales every year all the valid sales 
and we have a report that we can get and shows us where we are based on percentage wise and if we're low or lower than that 90 percent we better bring it up because we're not going to pass our monitoring mm -hmm. but uh, we stay about 95 percent of the sales of the values all the time yes, and that's, that's the best place to be you don't want to be over it up. You can, mm -hmm. we can go to 110 but you don't want to be to 110 overprice anybody's property is there a cap on how much you can increase during the course of an assessment period there is not so and if I had a hundred thousand dollar house that suddenly became yeah. worth five hundred thousand, that could bump just during the next assessment period. We do it every year. We look at assessments every year. We value property every year, and it could go up. There's no limit on it, but you know. But we stay within. Is there a the phase in? No. Ramp up or phase in period? No. No. And another interesting uh, fact on this is that last year there were five thousand seven hundred eighty-three total sales in this county total real estate transactions mm -hmm. across the board about 500 so those, a month. Are, those are the ones that larry just mentioned that yep. that they look at to be able to get that average and to, if they need to uh introduce the the uh the multiplier to get get the numbers between the 90 and the 110. yeah we kick out anything that's not market value like uh you know uh, foreclosures those type of things that's not mixed in those it's just open market fair market valued sales Valid sale. Larry, when they open the envelope, they're going to see two things. One that you just talked about, there's going to be an increase in the in the real estate, uh, in the real side of the property tax. But there's going to be the other part to me is more interesting and more confusing, and that's the personal property tax, the automobiles. Mm -hmm. uh, the uh, David Hardy and uh, from the governor's office and others have been fairly persistent in saying you do not want to pay on the personal property side, the full year. You want to pay only the first half of the year uh, because of benefits downstream. But now we're talking about strictly the personal property side and not the real property side. Would you explain that? Yeah, uh, the um, real estate, uh, it doesn't, you don't, you're not gonna get a credit back on any real estate uh, taxes paid. It's only on personal property and the way I understand it is that uh, if you when you get your tw twenty three tax bill, and uh, it is based on a timely payment, you have to pay your taxes on time, or you're not going to get any credits back. And so, but the first timely payment is due by September first, uh, and you get a two and a half percent discount if you pay that by September first. The second half is not due until March one the following year. But you don't you don't want to pay the whole thing in twenty three and personal property and now. personal and property, property. That's right, yeah. because that second half of personal property bill twenty three you can't pay it until January one of twenty four in order to get that credit back. That's just the way they got it set up. So I wouldn't pay the whole thing when you get it, and a lot of people do, but if you do that, you're not going to get any credit back in 24 when you do your 25 tax returns. This is so. this is obviously complicated, and people are a little confused on it. It's the yeah. reason being that the uh, our, uh, our legislators wanted to try to give some relief, and the fact that Amendment Second Amendment Two did not pass, this was the only way they could give relief on the personal property yes, side. Yes, right. Yeah, it went in front of the voters, didn't yeah. pass. Yeah. So they they designed a new bill yeah. this year that uh, you know that that's doing it this way, but. Yeah. Um, uh, you you won't be able to do anything until 25 until when you file your 24 tax returns and then you'll get a credit back on your state tax returns okay and, so uh, yeah. let, let's go the, through the various scenarios that, that I'm hearing people have questions about regarding how this personal property tax this so-called car tax credit is going to actually work so if if the taxpayer decides to pay all of it now they, that taxpayer will lose the ability to deduct anything in 2024 because all the taxes have been paid in 2023 before this car tax credit or rebate goes into effect. That's correct. So you don't want to pay all of your car tax today. I would not. If you pay half now and half in 2024, you will get credit for that half payment 
in 2024 because the law is already in effect to give you that credit. That's how So that's what you want to do. Yes. Now, if you decide I'm going to pay all of the car tax in 2024, you won't be able to get credit for all of that payment. You'll only get pay credit for the payment that was actually due in the year 2024. I'm not sure about that. Okay. Because uh, uh, I, I thought Dave Hardy explained that well, you can't it, defer paying your car tax till 2024 and yeah. get a credit for the whole payment. Okay. It would still only be credit for half. Okay. That's, that uh, would be my understanding also. Right. Too. Yeah, okay. And, and, yeah. and, um, and if you do pay it all now just by mistake, because that's reflexively, that's what you always do. You pay your car tax in full when it comes due this year. There's no yeah. going petitioning the state government to try to get that credit yeah. for the half payment that would have been due in 2024. You, you're, you're just yeah. you lost that credit for that year. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And then lastly, um, there are some folks because uh, all this is going to be handled through the state tax return as far as getting right. credit, right? Yes. Yeah. There are some folks in in our state uh, due to income levels and all that don't file state tax returns. How do you ha have any guidance from the state yet as to how they're going to get their credit? I do not. Because I I, do I, not. I, that's a question that I have not heard an answer to yeah. yet. And, and I just you have to file. You're going to have to file your uh, income tax returns in mm -hmm. order to get that credit. Back. Right. If you don't do that, I doubt you're going to get anything. I mean, you got just won't you just won't get anything back. Okay. Yeah. The only other complaint I've heard about is that the. Uh, values of these the assessed values of these vehicles has gone up they have. so that some people are doing running the numbers and say okay here's what i'm going to get in a tax credit but it's getting yeah. eaten up by the fact that somehow my car assessment the value of the yeah. car has gone up yeah. so making the tax yeah. bill a little larger so what happened there well do you know why like, those assessments are, it's are good news and bad news okay because right? uh the state tax department uh and along with uh, NADA books, uh, you know, Kelly Blue, Blue Books, they, uh, personal property, uh, they just not new vehicles, but used vehicles right. have gone up in value oh, over yeah. the last few years. And they've done some studies and said, you know, that the values have gone up. So they download these values into our computer system for these automobiles based on a VIN number. We put your VIN number in, mm -hmm. it gives us a value. Right. Okay, so they've raised the values this year. Always it's depreciated. Vehicles depreciate every year. But yeah, they not used, that, they not used this to. year. They used not, to. Not this year. <laughs> yeah. And they went up probably 10, 12%. And, and everybody's wondering, and we've gotten a lot of calls like, you know, I'm sure. Why are, I mean, my values are my, my, it's, I got the same vehicle that I had last year, and now it's more than what it was last year. But the state put those in there. We had nothing to do with that. They just, uh, they, they've done that. I hope they don't do it next year, but it, they did do that, and they went up uh, probably 10, 12 percent. And some folks will relay that out uh, to the supply chain. If you remember a year or so ago, a lot of dealerships were putting an additional price tag on their new vehicles that they had on the lot. So when, when those new prices go up on those new vehicles, so does yeah. the price on the used vehicle. Now, if you didn't trade your vehicle in or sell it, 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 didn't, it was immaterial to you because it didn't matter. But the, but the fact is that your value of your vehicle actually in, yes. increased. My, uh, my son bought a new vehicle in 2020, and in 2023, it was worth $3,000 more than what he paid for it. Yeah, I, I talked to a lady yesterday who traded a car in. <clears throat> And it was car was only two years old. They paid her five thousand dollars more yes. than what she paid for it. Yes. So. <laughs> yeah. And, and yeah. Con consequently, I, I bought uh, a used car for one of my sons uh, five years ago, and five years later, the value of that car with fifty thousand additional miles was only five hundred dollars less. Well, see, there five you years go. later. But, yeah, so like, it, that's the way it is. It's now. like Larry said. You know, you, it's. It's, yeah. it's like a seesaw. And, and look, it's inescapable. This is where the taxpayer gets a little upset, right? Sure. Because, uh, yeah, all this work that went into getting this car tax credit in place yeah. and legislatively, we know all went in Amendment 2 and all that. So it finally gets passed. And some folks aren't going to see the benefit of that, yeah. if at all, because of yeah. the uh, assessed value of their of the underlying property that's being taxed. Yeah. And then you got the real estate whammy. Uh, everybody sits around and loves the fact that these yeah. houses are selling for, you know, big dollars. But you know, the net effect is 
you're going to pay that when the tax man comes around. Hey, real quick, uh, homestead exemptions. Yes. Uh, uh, if you got your tax bill now and you, it just boggled your mind and you can't afford to pay it, what are your options right now, Larry and, and Eddie? If you can't pay your tax bill? You can't afford to pay all of it, for instance. Uh, Do you have any options? No. The, the, as far as I know, we don't handle the tax bills. The sheriff's tax office handles the billing. They take collect the money and that type of thing. How about, how about requesting a reappraisal? Do you handle oh, that? Oh, yeah, definitely. How do you request a Just reappraisal? Give a call to my office. Uh, we'll send somebody out. Anytime you want to question the value of property, we'll, we'll take a look at it. No problem. And there's still yeah. the, the Board of Equalization and Review that's done in February. In February, right? yeah. you can do that. And they've also established um, out of Charleston that Office of Tax Appeals, they have a new uh, route that you can appeal. You can take a choice. Uh, you can go to the Office of Tax Appeals in Charleston, or you can go to the Board of Equalization. So so they've got another route to do that with. And, and once again, that's a statewide number uh, of the deduction of for, for homestead it was twenty thousand dollars where in berkeley county twenty thousand dollar reduction in in your tax rate is is not a whole lot of money so i i contacted summer yesterday as a matter of fact i said please put that on our list for our, for the commission to discuss about trying to get an increase or at least have the discussion to increase the homestead numbers for berkeley county because of our values Mm -hmm. There should be some kind of tie-in with the local you property think, values. You would think that somehow, somebody, you know, the, the, the seniors and or disabled are the ones that are getting hit the worst. You know, we, we just went through uh, an increase in the ambulance fee. We just went through an increase in the water rates. You know, we just looked at a, an assessments on your property, which are up. We looked at your vehicles. They're up. You know. I get it. I understand. We have got to f be able to find some relief for the folks who do not have additional income. Is there any relief for these folks who have been in their houses for years and have seen these escalating values? They don't want to move. It's not an environment when you could move anyway, especially if you're on a fixed uh, income, Eddie. Is, is the end result uh, to get evicted from your own home? That's terrible. I, I, I would hate to think of that, but that, that's terrible. And, and truly, there, there's... There's nothing that I know of that we can do other than try to, to like, like we did on the ambulance fee. We were able to lock them in at the first step. It was a, it was a two-year uh, increase. <clears throat> if you were, if you were uh, disabled or on homestead exemption, you stayed at the $85. Uh, you did not go to the $110. Uh, you know, and yesterday, like I say, I, I contacted Summer and said, look, get this on our list for the council, for the commission to discuss uh, about making it one of our priorities to try and get that homestead exemption fee raised for our county. That, that's all I know to do. Yeah, I and mean, people say, well, if you can't afford your taxes, sell your home. But if you're elderly and you're on a fixed income, where are you going to go? Rents are extremely high no matter where you look now. Trying to buy a house, not only do you have the appreciation of homes, making them <clears throat> difficult for people on a fixed income to afford, but the interest rates are now driving people to the point where they can't afford to look into a house, too. It's a tough situation, Eddie yeah. and Larry. Yeah. Again, on the homestead, uh, I think along with that House Bill 2526 with the automobiles, if you are a disabled vet mm -hmm. between 90 and 100 percent disabled, they will give you a credit back on your taxes on your real estate. If that exceeds homestead exemption? Yes. It ex actually exceeds homestead exemption. Yeah, homestead will automatically come off there if you're, yeah. you know, but if you're disabled, you can get a credit back just like you can with your automobile if you're 90 to 100% disabled. Uh, any final thoughts, anything we didn't cover we needed to in the final 30 seconds we have here, Larry? Uh, I'd say we're uh, taking applications now for homestead exemption between Janu uh, July 1st and December the 1st. Don't go past December the 1st. Uh, and if you want to bring your uh, returns into the office, you're going to have to wait in line right now because we're busy. I advise you to put them in the mail or we have a box. You can drop them in, in there. But And you can also file online. Very we good. have that uh, availability you, online. You mentioned telephone number a while ago. Would you give that again? Yes, Would you Eric, give it? Eric code 304 264 1904